people always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right. Today it's Natalie and I, and I have a page of notes. I texted her to her phone. Today is the start of the fourth year. We've been doing this for four years now. Fourth? Yeah. Fourth year, fourth season. What do you think? Went by fast. It went by fast, but did you think we'd stick with it? Did you think it would be something that would oh, grow I like it has? No idea what I thought. I didn't know. I thought you were crazy when you mentioned it one day and the next day we're recording a podcast. I mean, you didn't even give me time to think about it. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't see your uh, monitor. I don't see it moving with you talking, so it scares me. I'm talking into the microphone. I want to make sure people can hear you. It's four years in. We've already had enough problems in the past four years. Let's get I into know, it. I was here you're going to just dwell on problems. No, I can see. You're registering now. That's, okay, good. Good. That's good. I, I want to make sure it, people can hear I me at home. brought it closer. Can and hear you. Moved it a little. And so uh, four years. We're still working out the kinks, guys. We have um, my wife who doesn't know how to project her voice. I do. We I... have uh, we have episodes that are kind of uh, blurry on the audio. I mean, on the video podcast. But it's either our internet or their internet, or there's a tornado coming through, like it was last week. Okay. We had tornado warnings, or, or yeah, what was it? it was I don't know the difference. A watch or a warning. I don't know I don't the difference know. in a watch or warning. The lesser one of whichever one that is. There's like possibility. But there was a storm going through. But that doesn't help our internet. That doesn't make the no. internet good. No. Um, we live out in the country, y'all. So, you know, the fact we got internet out here is good. During it's the pandemic. Great. During the pandemic, I was doing uh, Zoom shows. Yeah. And, like, people wanted to see me do the flip trick that I won Fool Us with. But it was glitching. Well, I could pause the video and, and do anything I wanted at that point. Yeah, you could, but I think that would be more obvious because you have to walk up there and push pause. But they don't know. You can have somebody off camera pushing pause on the thing. Oh. There's a lot of people that get did glitch tricks. So they would talk and then they would, they would and then they would come back. But that was part of the trick. They it didn't glitch. They just paused what they were doing and made fun of the technology. Oh. But we're in the country, and it was really happening out here. Yeah. But um, four we years. The best we can. We're still working at the kinks. I hope you can hear my wife now that she's adjusted her microphone. But um, we have one podcast that's completely unlistenable. I went on, and I tried to edit it. I tried to just up his volumes. I tried to get rid of the static in his side. Uh, um. He had an earpiece in, and he was with the little microphone. Oh, yeah. And he was walking down the street. And we were like, say that again? Huh? We couldn't hear it. We were we were getting it. We were getting it. But it was yeah. really, we had to really listen. Yeah. But then when we listened back to the audio, you couldn't understand it at all. But um, we don't have a production team. We don't have producers. We don't. It's just us. Yeah. We're trying to figure this out on our own. We got the basic stuff. We're not millionaires, so we don't have the full whole podcast setup, which would be cool, but maybe one day. We're trying. We get a whole We're podcast trying. studio like Joe Rogan. But let me tell you guys, That'd thank you awesome. guys for following us. Thank you guys for skipping those episodes that are unlistenable <laughs> and sticking with us. We have listeners in like right. 54 different countries now. Um, I have people all the time wanting to do like a, a sponsorship deals and different things, but it's like, I don't want it loaded with commercials. I have enough commercials of my own that we'll get to. It's next on the list here, but um, Natalie gives me a hard time with, but I don't want it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll end up with commercials on this thing, but I'm okay the way it is right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. Four years in. Yeah. Yeah. What's the what's the most memorable episode? This isn't on the list. Do you have one that's like most memorable? Um, uh, I like the fly guy and that extra story he told with the little kid. So the fly guy was go back and listen to that one. But that was the guy that makes Peter Pan fly and the Little Mermaid fly. Yeah, in, uh, on Broadway. Yeah. Um, he is a magician. 
and he does all the rigging to make people levitate. He also works with magicians to set up their levitations. And uh, he's under a Titan lock and key. He can't talk about who he's helped and what he's done for who. Magic wise, he wouldn't even tell me off the air. But um, yeah, great guy. Yeah. The podcast extra for Patreon was a tear jerker. Tear jerking. It was I awesome. Loved it. it was awesome. It was really, really sweet. Um, but he was cool. And yeah. he just reached out to us. I didn't know who the fly guy was. Yeah. But dude, I'd hang out with him. Yeah. He's he's awesome. I like him a lot. Yeah. I am still working on pitching the podcast, though. If you guys have an idea how I can describe it in an elevator pitch, I would appreciate it. Because it's Wes Isley's Magic Life podcast. Yes, we have lots of magic on here and magicians. But it's more than that. We've had actors. We've had dentists. We've had neurologists. We've had authors. We've had television entertainers. We've had health experts. We've had a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It's not just magic, but it's a lot of magic. How do I say well, that in elevator do, pitch? Yeah, well, each month you have a whole schedule going on for each four weeks that you do. So, right? Right, but in the elevator pitch, I don't say week one, I right. have this person. I know, week I know, two, I, know. I have I, this. It's 80% magic and 20% anyway, a whole bunch of other stuff. You're not helping me. Out. <laughs> this elevator pitch is sounding worse and worse. But, I don't um, know. Anyway, if you guys have an idea, let us know. We'll use it. If, if it's good, we'll use it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Send it in to us. Um, our magic shop, commercial time, commercial time. We're six minutes in, commercial time. Wes Isley's magic shop. Uh, the link to WesIsley.com is going to be merged to magiciansmagicshop.com. So you can just go to WesIsley.com. That'll be linked up. I'll do that with and the next time that Natalie and I talk to you guys. But right now you go to magiciansmagicshop.com and um, I add new tricks every single day. Check it out. The ones that are behind the curtain, uh, they're one-off tricks. I only have one in stock. Some of them, they aren't made anymore. Once they're gone, they're gone. Some of them sell out the day of. Check it out. I also added a merch page that has our logo t-shirts. It's going to have the stickers on there, the playing cards, all that stuff. Uh, the television show go t-shirts check that out that's awesome if you're not a member of our patreon account yeah. we're in year four commercial time check it out <laughs> guys guys patreon how teach it's magic cool because you can see hear stories like the fly guys really sweet sweet touching story and some funny things and everything else well stuff that i can't put out like like we were doing the metamorphosis yeah and we were practicing it and I, I fell that. off the back of it. And I knocked the air out of myself. Yep. yep. Those raw footage videos go to you, Patreon people. I can't put that out on my Facebook There's page. There's nothing I can do. I'm in the But think about, think about how somebody that doesn't Hello? like me or somebody that just wants to, to like really make my life a, a, a hard time. Yeah. They could share that on the internet and meme the heck out of that thing. Yeah. But for you guys, I share stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Because it's funny. <laughs> It's definitely funny. <laughs> I can't put that out there. But I put it out for you guys. So if you're on Patreon, you can see stuff like that. Uh, blooper videos, all kinds of stuff. Behind the scenes videos. First look videos. And I teach magic. Check it out. Check it out. Enough of the commercials. Um, let's see. Tell us about your new weight loss uh, adventure coaching thing we did. I did. Wes has helped me start a newsletter. I helped. Go ahead. Say it again. Start it. I don't care. Say it again. Say it again. Wes forced the idea of a newsletter on me. So he actually wrote it himself and had me look at it and approve it. How's that? Is that what you want me to say? No, just Wes wrote, did a newsletter for me. But I know your business pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you are the expert, but like, you know, magic, you can go to a magic convention. And I like that trick. I didn't like how that guy did that. I can say yeah. about your business. I know it kind of inside now too. Okay. But I wrote it in your voice. Yeah. We know each other that well. Yeah. Did you critique any of it? I fixed uh, punctuation and spelling pretty much. But it much. sounded like it you. It sounded great. It was, it's exactly what she would say. I liked it. So. So if you want, if you want to sign up for a, a newsletter that has healthy tips, tricks, and recipes, send us your email address. It's once a month. 
So far, it's just one. <laughs> Is that a commercial? Did you just do a commercial for yourself? Yep. See, I get a hard time. She gives me a hard time about that it. That lasted all 15 seconds. But uh, how do they sign up for it, for real? Just send your email. To your Facebook page or? Yeah, you can messenger it to me or, yeah. But it's, uh, I don't know. I was looking through my notes here. It had it had tips and tricks. It had financial stuff on there. Yeah. So the plan is about healthy body, healthy mind, healthy finances. So we have one of each of those things on there. We have um, a healthy recipe. You have transformation people, yeah. people that give testimonials. Yeah. You have uh, your story. I'm thinking about putting a this or that thing on there. We got lots Eventually. of ideas. We got lots of ideas. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's It'll be neat. What do we get next? We get next. Lana graduated sixth grade. Woohoo! We are done with school for the summer. Yay! This is her teacher celebrating. Why are you celebrating? <sighs> I get sick of doing it after a while. <laughs> That's a lot of work on Natalie. I have taught Lana like four times the past seven years of her schooling. Yeah. Natalie's done 99.9% .9 of everything else. It's, it's, you know, I mean, it's like any other kid who will go to school and be fine with it. And the next day it's like, you're pulling teeth, trying to get them to do anything. And the next day you're like, honey, that was awesome. Let's have great days in school like that. And then you're like, I shouldn't have said a darn word because the next day we're back to pulling teeth trying to get things done. So it's it's a roller coaster, but we get through it. And by the time we're done with 36 weeks, I am ready for my break. I am ready to have time off from teaching. Get back a couple hours of my day to do what I want to do. Which during the summer... I don't really have that much time to do that because we're doing so many shows, but at least I don't have to add in school on top of it. Lana, Lana, Natalie will say at yeah, breakfast time, hey, Lana, um, right after breakfast, I have to make a couple phone calls. I have to book a couple shows and then we're doing school. I give her forewarning. So I'm warning her like, okay, you're going to have a little bit of free time after breakfast, but then we're doing school. Oh, you would think that that would help. Uh-uh. That no. gives her time to hide. Yeah, she she'll, hides. Oh, she hides. She'll she'll sneak. She'll go up to a room, or she'll be real quiet. And I always see her. I don't say anything, but I always see her. She'll be real quiet. She won't go tonk, tonk, tonk down the steps. Real quiet down the steps. Put on shoes and go outside. And like, and, <laughs> she's gonna be somewhere where. And any other time, she's running through the house. You hear her. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if she knows school's coming, she is MIA. <laughs> He says, I think out of sight, out of mind. Like, she thinks I'm going to forget. Right. Like, if I don't see Lana, I will forget that we have to get school done. And that's not the case. Because I want to get it done. Because I want to get to my summer break. But we go later into the summer. So we didn't finish until after the first week of July. We went through the first week of July. But now she's not going to start until we get back from vacation and we go on vacation mid-September. So she's going to start towards the end of September where a lot of kids start early, mid-August these days. So yeah, our summer breaks don't quite line up with everybody else, but neither do our vacations, neither do just our, any of our schedule. So it, <laughs> we do things different. And that's what I like about homeschool. We can do how we want to do. But so. also with your chest pain and everything you went through last year, it's amazing. You you got school done because as many times as you were hurting and still did school, you yeah. took some days off. Yeah, but I tried to just get through it. But if you were healthy, we would be done probably already. We probably could have gotten done a couple weeks earlier. And yeah. then she also, she went to church camp. So that took a week off of school. Right. Um, and I know Christmas time gets real busy as far as shows, but we still want to do the family traditions and the baking and the getting gifts to people and so I think we took an extra week of break there that I wasn't planning on but I'm like you know what that's all right yeah it's we gotta enjoy and that gives you a break too have it it did it did but you know we stayed on track more this year than we have in the past and I'm hoping we can keep that cycle going for next year too so uh, 
She's getting better at hiding. <sighs> oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Um, so we did something different this year. Mm-hmm. Every year she does testing. And with Virginia, you don't have to test. So you just tell this, this the county or whatever, hey, she did school. She did good. Trust us. No. Oh, wrong. see, I don't know. Go ahead. No. Me. So unless you do a religious exemption, then you don't have to test. But if you didn't, which we didn't, you have to test every year, which I think is fine because you're looking in to see how she progressed. So it's really simple in Virginia. All you have to do, beginning of the year, you tell them, hey, I'm homeschooling my kid. I'm teaching our language, arts, math, and science. Go. And then at the end of the year, you say, hey, here's her test results. She passed. We're continuing. See ya. That's it. Okay. So religious exemption thing. Mm-hmm. I don't think it should be allowed because you could say religious exemption and not school your child at all. I, that's my opinion. Take it or leave it. I think even if I did religious exemption, I'd still be getting her to take the test just so that I could prove to myself. Okay. But how many did. moms are out there? Help it. Now, you know better than that. You know it's A, right? And why is it A? So the kid has these honor scores. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, how, how, don't do that. How often you know, do you think that happens? Probably. I don't know. I honestly don't know, but it's hard. I know the first couple of tests that we did, I had to stop myself from going when she did the thing. Nowadays, I just walk away. But this time she, she was doing it. And she, so this year, we usually, usually in the past, we've done paper tests. We've gotten paper tests and she fills in the little um, bubble sheet of her answers. We send it in and then we end up getting our scores mailed to us. A uh, month later, it seems like. This year we did it online um and it was untimed because the paper one you have to do times which again i mean how do they know that you're timing it it's you know, honor system pretty much but i was and it was kind of making her like freak out a little bit because you want to give her like hey you only have 10 minutes left and she's like, so we did untimed and on the computer and she really liked that a lot more it was a much more calm experience but I did not help her. And you can ask her because she had a vocabulary section and she didn't know it was, you know, read the sentence and then the underlined word, what is another meaning for that, that word? And one of them, she, she was, decided she wanted to sit next to me. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, now I have to, I can't watch. Like, I don't want to watch. I don't want to give her any facial expressions of, Ooh, you know, so I'm not watching. I'm over here doing work or reading my book, but she's sitting next to me. And she's like, Mom, I don't know what this word means. And I look over at her, I'm like, can't tell you. And so she picks an answer and then she goes to the next one and she goes, Hey, Mom, what did it mean? So I told her, and she goes, No, because she, she got it wrong. And she tried to go back and said, You don't, that's cheating. You don't go back and change your answer because she can't go back. Oh, on that, on that. So she can go back and check her answers if she wants to. What was the question? But, Do you remember the um, word? Slender. She didn't know what slender meant. Wow. And she didn't pick thin. I think was the thin was the word that they gave. I, I was. But she didn't pick that one. I think I was 43 years old. You were teaching her third, fourth grade. And galoshes was a thing. I didn't know what the heck a galosh was. What is galoshes? Yeah, I, we didn't know what it was, yeah. but that was on her test at the end of the year. Yeah. Oh, I've never used galoshes in my life. What is that? That was, that was one where it's like, honey, you just got to pick an answer because I can't, I cannot look it up and tell you what it is. So you get it right. right. But it sucks because I don't know what galoshes are either. <laughs> we do now. All three of us know what galoshes are. We looked it up later. There's some kind of book <laughs> that goes over your shoe to go outside. Apparently yeah. we were. I was poor growing up. I definitely couldn't afford the lunches. That, but and I today I have no idea if she got that right or not. If she guessed it correctly, I don't know. But no, yeah, we do it right so that she gets the right things, and it it comes out her scores, which was cool with the online thing. We got her scores within ten minutes of her finishing the test, it's which awesome. I was shocked. I didn't know, I didn't know the difference of online and paper, and I was you got them now. Yeah. Like, I was shocked that they yeah. came right. I thought somebody had to go ahead and actually grade it. Yeah. She does really, really well. I mean, I'm really proud of her. She does great. We need to work on her spelling. That's what she does not do well in every year. I can't help her with that. So, I mean, I, we might have to get, like, an extra 
workbook or something for her to work on. We've tried different approaches, but it's just not something that clicks for her. And she tries to sound it out, and it's I'm like, I don't even know what you're trying with this word here. And we go over it, but it's just not sticking. So I think we need more of a we need some sort of workbook. Or something. I'm awful with spelling, and I don't know the difference between indefinitely and defiantly. To me, it looks the same, sounds the same in my head, and man, I can't. But that's just one of a million words I can't spell. Yeah. So my do my newsletters. It's like yeah. Natalie, help. <laughs> I, uh, it underlines it in red, but I can't even. It doesn't know what it's trying to say. Yeah. And she did good with like where you put commas and apostrophes and periods and capitalizations. She did good on that. But the things where you're naming, um, like nouns and pronouns and verbs and adjectives verbs adjectives and things way beyond that she wasn't doing so hot so those are the two areas that she needs work on but i kind of knew that and then um like i said the, the commas and things like that she did great she did amazingly well in math she did really good with reading and reading comprehension she did really well with that but they so. tell you like she's on an eighth grade level she's on a 10th grade level different thing yeah and that's kind of neat. I think that's cool. Yeah. To say that. Yeah. But even her lowest level was a sixth grade level, right? Like she just passed the sixth grade. Except for spelling. What was what level was that? It was like fourth grade. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. But she can't spell. But she does great and everything else. So, you know, everybody has a problem area. Well, Willow's 19 years old and she's like, spell cat. <laughs> and she's She's texting her friends and she asked Surrey to spell it for her so she could text her friend. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, everybody has a problem area. I know what her problem areas are. So the way she tested is exactly how I would expect it to come out. Yeah, so, so that's good. Yeah. That's good. No yeah. surprises. No. We took her on a little shopping spree. She, yes. Every year she graduates, she gets her tests done, she does well, she gets a shopping spree. A shopping spree. I'm putting quotation marks in the air. It's, we take her to five below and we give her $25 to spend. She loves it. But you take she her to five it. below with $25, she can get five things. And she thinks it's just amazingly awesome. She got this horde of stuff. So. When she was littler though, she got a lot more. Well, she chews things like pieces of candy and tiny little. Yeah. Cheap. Toys. Now she's getting t-shirts and now stuffed she's animal. she's t-shirt and a little stuffed animal. Art supplies. She got art stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what else? What else? So the boys have discovered their wieners. Oh my gosh. And they won't leave them alone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As, oh, send help. Send somebody just to do the laundry. It's awful. Bed sheets. Diapers. Blankets. PJs. I don't, they're not enough PJs in the world to keep those kids clothed overnight when they've figured out that they can get their hands down their pants at nighttime and have their hand on them. It must be a comfort thing. That's all I can think. Because it's not, they just stick their hand and just leave it there. But it completely messes up their diaper. Little two year old so out. Pretty, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it pushes their diaper down. So they're peeing up out of their diaper. Or in a couple instances, Julian's diaper has been off to the side, and he, I mean, he's not, the diaper's not even anywhere near where it needs to be to catch pee. And the bed's covered, they're covered, they wake up, they're cold, because they're laying in pee, pee for how long? And the room smells, and the blankets are messed up, and you gotta and figure we have, out what stuff the animals need to go in the, the washing machine, and what, ugh. And we have shows around the clock. We got early mornings and late nights and doing laundry on top of it and yeah. it's not fun so and there's multiple outfits it's like i don't have like normal people wear pjs for at least a couple nights in a row right right i know i do but i don't know if normal people do i feel like normal people do so i don't think people have seven pairs of pjs if they do their laundry once a week to get them through the week i feel like you have a couple pairs of pjs and that gets you through a week. I got them three sets of PJs each. So I have six sets of PJs. Done. Three nights. And the laundry basket. The laundry hamper smells 
It's like pee. I mean, it's like it's awful. <laughs> You're trying to rinse things out and drip them, uh, drip them, drape them over the side. It doesn't matter. It still smells. It's awful. So Natalie uh, reached out to uh, a twin Facebook group. A couple of them. And said, I help. Yeah. I was like, I know this is just a twin thing, but I'm figuring. <sighs> I got to double the problem here. We didn't <laughs> somebody's have this, got an answer. We didn't have this problem long No. So we got some good advice. They were like, okay, get the zip up PJs. A lot of them said with the footies, but I think, I mean, how can they reach it without, without this, if there's no feet? I don't know that they do zip up if they don't have footies. Like that makes it the one piece. They do. There's, they have, they just have cut off. Like, you know, the adult onesies, you can't right, find your right, feet. Right. They're like that. So you put socks on their feet so their feet don't get cold at nighttime. I don't see why it matter. I wouldn't think so either. Yeah. But anyway, maybe that's just the easy way to say it. Get footy pajamas. Um, that zip up. Some people were like, I cut off the feet and put them on backwards because my kid figured out the darn zipper. <laughs> I'm like, great. Right, well, we can start with the zipper. And then if they figure out the zipper, we'll move on to backwards. And we watch them on the baby monitor and they're like, and then, and then, and then, and then. okay. And they unzip each other. I know. So they just the <laughs> oh, I wouldn't, it would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next step. But now we got to find footy pajamas in the middle of summer. And you don't want those thick ones because it's summertime. You want the thinner ones. And I, I'm having a hard time. I've gone on Amazon, but they're like, it's not two day shipping for things. It's like, like three, weeks. three weeks shipping. And I'm like, oh, it's something faster. But at this point, I might as well just order them and wait three weeks. Right. Because... But anyway. We stopped on the way home from our show today and we went to a, a used clothing store for children. They yeah. didn't have it. No. Walmart didn't have it. They had really... one set of PJs that was zip up, but they did not have. The boy's size. size. They have every other size, but not theirs. So I didn't get it, obviously. But we're going to find them. We're going to get them. And it's going to work. One lady said, when she started potty training. Duct tape. Just... Oh, yeah. Well. Duct tape. Belt. Not when she started potty training, but yeah. She said she resorted to. Oh, really? I was kidding. No. No. One lady was like, I put tape around their diaper. She said, obviously not on the skin because she won't get yelled at. No, you don't put it on the skin. But you put it around the diaper so it makes it tighter so they can't get their hand down in there. Just at nighttime. Just the and footy you know, pajamas thing is enough, I think. Well, Golly, I was joking with the update. No, she said she said she was ordered to it eventually when they figured when Golly. they figured out the zipper and the snaps and everything else on the damn footy and you pajamas. Put them all backwards and they're helping each other. Right. So you was she resorted to tape. Did that so, smart? Just get up and go pee. So then there's another lady that said, once you start potty training them, put a potty in their bedroom and they can use it in the middle of the night if they need to. We have carpeted see, floors. It's I, not going to be good. I can see how that would be very useful. I can also see how that could be very messy. Dude, I see them playing boats on the oh, toilet Lord water. Have mercy. There's two of them. They got a Captain America and an Aquaman. Aquaman's in the toilet. No, what would happen? <laughs> I have a feeling it would just end up dumped. Yeah. It would end up dumped. Uh, we have carpet in that room. How did she not have them dump it? I should go back on there and ask her. Like, my kids are destructive. Like, we had to remove the diaper genie from their room because they would knock it over and take all the diapers out. And they were beating it against the wall and putting holes in the wall. I'm talking about the bedroom one, though. That's yeah, downstairs. Well. So how... I don't know. I don't know. Anyway... They do put their hand down their pants sometimes when they're in the living room playing. But so far, thank God, in public, they have not done it. How funny is it that you wake them up from a nap and their hands down their pants and they let you hold their hand and they walk all the way to the dinner table and they won't remove that hand. They just, or they'll just go wash. to the living room and they'll just watch TV. You gotta wash that butt hand. <laughs> Ugh. But, yep. Yeah, luckily they don't do it out in public, though. I think they're just too distracted while they're out in public and they don't think about it, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Oh, 
So uh, early mornings and late nights, we're all sleep deprived. And then we get up in the morning. Yeah, pee is everywhere. <laughs> we get up in the mornings and have to deal with the pee situation. Yeah. Um, let's see. We had a fun thing, though. We had a family day this week. Yeah. So. My idea. Wes's idea. Great. So healthy. Hey. Wonderfully on track with my nutrition. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. Sign up for a newsletter. <laughs> He decided we should make homemade donuts. I've never done that before. Me neither. It was actually kind of fun. I mean, we were looking up recipes and they were like, do this, that, and the other thing, and mix the snow, do all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. But he found one where you just get biscuits in a can and you flatten them and you twist out, use something to twist out the middle of it. So you nuts, and then you also have donut holes. And then you just boil them. In, well, not really boil, but you cook them in some oil. oil. And you make a little ice. And then they showed us how to make a little glaze. And you dip them in the glaze and off you go. And if you're Lana, you dip them in glaze and then in sprinkles. And a lot of sprinkles. Too many sprinkles. But it was a really fun project. It was. We I all think, got involved. The boys were napping. Yeah. But it was uh, Lolo, Natalie, anyway. Lana, and I. The boys enjoyed the product. <laughs> they had some for night at dinner. Yeah, they had some last night and they had some tonight. They very much enjoyed it. They thought it was very, very yummy. I told her I wanted to go to uh, and get an injector. I want some jelly inside mine. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun. What kind of jelly would you put in? Strawberry. Okay. Why not? I'm just asking. I don't know how you do it. Because in how a jar. Suck it up with you. Will it suck up out of the thing? Know, I don't know. Maybe it's a certain type. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. I had fun, though. I was the person putting it in the oil, and that was really kind of fun getting them cooked and cooked. Yeah. It was neat, and it didn't pop. I thought it was going to be like grease. I thought it was going to be popping and hurting. I did plop a couple in and got it on her foot. It yeah, it didn't foot. feel good, but it didn't burn me. Um, But that was my Sunday, so that was my cheat day. I, I had a few donuts. Yeah. I ended so. up eating one too. Sorry. It is what it is. Sorry. It was yummy. It was very, very good. Sometimes you just have to enjoy what you got going on. Not worry about it. But I mean, guys, 183 shows June through August. We got double shows every single day this week, it seems like. And it we don't, but it seems like it, you know? Yeah. And it's lots of early we, mornings. We have to do stuff nights. like that just to break up the monotony of just work, 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 work. Yeah. Because this is our job and we're dragging the family into this. We're dragging Willow along. We're dragging the boys along. So we have to, even though it's more work, it's just easy just to sit on the couch and just say, all right, we're putting our feet up and veg tonight. We got to have family time. We got to make memories for the kids. We got to. Yeah. It yeah. was fun. We had a good time. Um, it, it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I really was like, oh, now the cleanup sucked because guess who had to do the cleanup? Everybody ate donuts and left the room. Right. I, I went into the office. I had stuff to do. Everybody just left, and the kitchen was a teetotal wreck, and here I am going. I was left to clean everything up. I dumped the grease in the woods. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. Mm. I did that. I had to wash everything. Our dishwashers are broken. So I had to hand, I have to hand wash everything these days, and that sucks. So that just added to, on top of everything I used to make dinner and serve dinner. This Paper house, plates have come in very handy since our dishwasher is. This house that we bought, the people were very well off. And they had a $15,000 refrigerator, a $5,000 wolf stove, uh, like kitchen, I mean, like a restaurant grade stove. In I our love house. that stove. Um, our dishwashers are probably. I have no idea. Two thousand dollars, but they match the cabinet, so you can't even tell the dishwasher. Like when we were looking at the house, I was like, "Where's the dishwasher?" Like I had to have pointed out to me because it just blends right in, and they're really, really cool when they work. Which they worked for this first time it broke down, but we just haven't had time to call anybody to get them over to try and fix them. And because they're so fancy, I don't know who to call. Do you know who to call? I you just look up the company, I suppose and maybe they would tell you okay i guess but um we're just so busy i mean if they say hey we can come out tomorrow but well, we have two shows tomorrow right we can't i mean it'll be fall before we get somebody out here i'm sure <sighs> um which sucks for me well early mornings 
<laughs> nothing I can do. He doesn't care. He just, mm. uh, well, if he wasn't washing dishes. I wash eggs. Congratulations. You do that once every four days. Anyway. I do this every single day. Um, it's annoying. Early Poor ones. people who had, didn't have dishwashers back in the day. Hey, don't act like you're doing dishwashers by the river. Don't act like you you have to carry all the stuff outside. You know what? I want to hear it. Who washes all the dishes, cooks all the meals, and does all your laundry? You do. Thank you. Oh, thank you, honey. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to start making you do your own darn laundry and wash your dishes. I put my laundry away. Great job. So does Lana. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. I don't like it. I'm changing it. Shows twice a day, every single day during the summer. Some days it's three, four shows a day and loading and unloading. But I think the main thing that's actually hurt me is driving the steering wheel, putting it in gear and turning the steering wheel to try to fish tail the RV back. Last year, I had really bad tennis elbow because our driveway is what, like two football fields long? I don't know. I don't know, it's two football and with fields a, long. And it with the trailer, the, tra the trailer, tra the fishtail, when you try to back it up, Natalie walks behind the car. We have reverse camera in the RV, but I can't see anything but the trailer. So she helps me back it up out of the driveway. And just when you're, when you're not driving and you're turning it, it's a lot of force. So it's a lot of torque on my elbow. And driving the RV all and day long. And he only uses one hand instead of like a normal person using two hands. He only wants to use this one hand. And I'm like, if you use both hands, it would take pressure off your elbow. But he just wants to use one hand. Well, I'm looking out the window. This is easier than this. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you but, just did it. You can uh, do it. But anyway. Anyway, I'm right-handed. So now he has tennis elbow movement. He got a shot last year and it fixed it for a whole year. But the doctor did say you might have to come back for another shot. So, so tennis elbow last off. year, it hurt on the inside. And the doctor was like, you know, it's on the outside. I'm like, no, that's not. Oh, it's on the outside? Well, and he said, show me where. And he shot me there. And my arm was like useless for like two days. I'm so excited for him to get it because that right? night we have mass nut and I can't do that by myself. Logan. And boy, I was, I, I went to bed. I couldn't do anything. I, I went to my computer and tried to do work. There was I couldn't use my arm. So um, this year it's on the outside, and my buddy said, um, "You got tennis elbow." He said, uh, "I was on the phone with him, and he said, uh, like stick up your middle finger. Does that hurt?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And then I did it. I'm like, "Yeah, ow!" It like pulls a when I flex my hand, it pulls a tendon over here. If I pick up. Here's a jumbo deck of cards. If I pick this up off of the table and squeeze and lift up, man, does it hurt. So it, it's it's way different than last year. It's like worse. Well, maybe a reaction will be different than last year. I'm hoping that the shot still works. Like, I hope it's not worse than last year. Because the pain seems like it's worse. Last year was annoying, but I don't remember. But oh, pain's no. weird. Last year, you weren't happy. You were, you were dying. Yeah, see, pain's weird, though. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so I got it. Yeah, I've been getting after him for weeks. Make an appointment, Wes. Make an appointment. No, I think I just bruised something. No, Wes, I think it's your tennis elbow. Make an appointment, Wes. Hey, Wes, you're getting up. Go ahead and call the doctor and make an appointment. So I bought a little brace. And <laughs> that didn't work. No. Nope. Make an appointment. And this time it feels like it's like a pulled muscle or pulled something in there. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll just put the brace on and try not to do anything. But every morning I have to back up the RV and I'm driving all day long. So we finally got an appointment for a week from today. And he said last time, make it so that you don't have to work the next day. That's, that's not possible. I have to work that night and two shows the next day. Actually, time. it's a week from tomorrow. Yeah. That's not going to be good. I hope it's good. I hope it. Yeah, you're going to have mass nut in that night. An illusion show. I'll right. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm the magician. Welcome to the show. <laughs> My arm's flopping around. You're Kind of big it. Just suck. Well, I can suck it up pretty good during the show, and then afterwards I cry like a little baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> so Natalie's doctor's appointment is Thursday this Thursday. week. Thursday. Yep. Do you think you're gonna get any answers? I expect zero from this. Not a thing. I expect no changes. Nothing. So we keep talking to people and saying, you know, this is Natalie's symptoms. You know, they gave her uh, 
Tylenol codeine. She still got problems here. Um, she still got the pills if she has to take them. She had four bad days last week where she was in pain. Three bad days this week where you were in pain. How many times did you take a pill this week, though? Just one? Just once. I don't want, I don't like taking the pills. They make me woozy and not feeling good. They give me bad dreams. Constipated. I don't like them. So, uh, so I only take it if I really, really, I don't even take it when I really, really should, but I caved. I was exhausted and I was hurting and I just didn't want to hurt anymore. And we were talking to a lady at church and she was asking and I said, you know, she said, oh yeah, well, I'm glad this year's going better for you because last year she was in so much pain in the hospital. I said, honey, she's still in pain. Yeah, it's better than being in the hospital. And um, we talked to the lady and she said that you might have a vitamin deficiency. Yeah. Check, yeah. So That's check the first we've heard of this. The B12 can mess you up, but yeah. So she said be... she had severe chest pain. She went to the hospital and they just sent her home. That's what they did to you. Yeah. So we're going to ask about that. See, so you, you have to have a specific blood test for it. So we'll see if they listen and let me take the blood test. We'll see if that's it. I have my doubts because she was also telling us about how she had been sick and then she got this aversion to meat. So she wasn't eating protein. I am. So I'm not sure that that's the case. But you spent 33 days in the hospital. Um, you didn't eat for 12 days. Yeah. If your vitamins I'm got so depleted. It. Well, I I'm say, not, if it, yeah. yeah. I'm not absorbing it. But if you've been playing catch up since that hospital stay with vitamin levels. Yep. I don't know. So I don't know. we're going to. We're going to test that. that. We're going to check on that one this time. Yeah. Because we're at wit's end. We don't know. It's not, not gas. No. It's not acid reflux. No. It's not GERD. No. It's not, oh, it shouldn't be scar tissue. It shouldn't be anything from her multiple operations. They've already weaned all that out and they don't know. So it's up to us to do research, apparently, to figure out what's wrong with her because the doctors, I don't know. They said Go back to a CT months. scan and a blood test. All of that came back normal. I mean, you get your own results back. So it came back normal. So I'm going there. I got that two and a half months ago. And then now, three months from when I saw this doctor, I finally get to get back in. Why I had to wait three months? I don't know. But there you have it. So that's what I'm saying. I'm expecting nothing from this. I'm going to go sit there, look at her. She's going to say, everything you back normal. Hmm, I don't know. We're going to mention the B12 thing, maybe or maybe not. That'll do. It might not be B12. It might be another vitamin you're deficient. And what do I have to do? Take that test and wait another three months for her to, to get back and say, hey, you can just take it over the counter or have a shot? I mean... Can can I give you a B12 shot? Do you have to go to a doctor to get it done? I have no idea. Because I can do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it, for it, it, I'm not expecting anything. I'm just not... Which Maybe is one love. day eventually we'll figure something out, but I'm not I'm not very positive about it at this point. Are you? Wish us luck. When the doctor tells you, I don't know if I'm the one to be able to figure this out, doesn't give you much confidence. Well, it was a nurse practitioner, wasn't it? Whatever. She consulted with a doctor. Same. In other news, <laughs> Natalie did a podcast all by herself this oh, week. I did. I do podcast by myself. And that Natalie never feels bad for me or helps oh me God, set God. up the little studio here and oh. does all the work for you me. You always set up the stuff. I never set up the stuff. I wouldn't know but how to I do it. But I took care of you. You did. did. I took care of you. He signed me up for a podcast and told me later. The people reached out to me and said that they have a podcast with people that are extraordinary in their line of work. And Natalie being a health coach and a magician's assistant and a magician in her own right and a uh, mother of three homeschool all, all the stuff that she has going on she is an inspiration to others and we'd love to have her on the podcast that's very sweet. of course i said yes so i was on the podcast how did it go it was wonderful how'd you feel doing it without me did you miss me yeah of course i like doing with you better than by myself but i did it yeah. Well, I mean, 
maybe it's a, a do you even know the, the type of podcast is it only women he interviews or i don't know okay yeah. nope i don't have any answer for that do you know when it comes out she said in about a week or so from so when we recorded follow natalie back. on facebook she'll share it when it comes out mm-hmm. um we did the madison county fair this week yeah and i've been doing that fair for over 20 years and this year they hired me just for a, one small show just one basic show mm-hmm. that um they put a flatbed pickup truck out there a flatbed tractor trailer out there for us to perform on which is fine set up in front of the bleachers mm-hmm. it's fine we've done it i did it last myself you were in the hospital and this year as we pulled in the maple leaves were all turned over which is a sign of a storm coming the trees were swaying really hard it the was sky so was turning wild. black yeah it was sketchy and scary we got all of our stuff on the stage and it started to sprinkle and we're like oh no oh no and all the adults are just running for shelter you see everybody running for shelter because it looks gloomy and scary yeah so we called our lady that booked us and we we're like um if you want us to start the show we can but i mean if it starts raining harder than us we gotta pack up we can't have our stuff ruined it's just not um, you can't have your stuff ruined for one show you can't buy a brand new show by the very next day we had so we did a show for them probably six years ago and we were under a tent and a derecio hit and on the podcast facebook group for this episode i'll put a link to that magic life episode but it was a 30 by 30 tent and every chair in that tent was yeah. soaking wet full i mean of we brought everything to the very middle of the tent like we moved all of as fast as we could we moved all of our stuff to the middle of the tent half of it was ruined i mean all of it was wet it took this I and mean, we had to pack it up take it home and we laid it all out on the driveway. I guess we didn't have a show the next day. Or no, we didn't. We laid it all out on the driveway. Any fabric stuff we put in the wash and dryer. It was it was a mess. A lot of inventory got ruined. Yep. So we didn't want that happening again. And we weren't under a tent. And we had shows the next day. So right. we knew we couldn't air it out. Yeah. So we called the lady and we're like, I know it's only sprinkling right now, but if you look at the radar, it's supposed to be here, you know, like 20 minutes into our show. It's bad. So they were flexible, which was awesome. And Wes went and did close-up magic in the picnic pavilion over there near all the food and everything. So that's what we ended up doing instead of a magic show. So it was very nice for them to be flexible and understand. Yeah. Because they could have been, they could have been mean about it. They could have been like, no, we hired you to do a show. You can do a show. I mean, what are you going to do at that point? And then cancel it 15 minutes in. It just isn't fun. And you're not going to have a big crowd because it's raining. Right. Um, I just wish I could have prepared close-up magic a little bit more. I mean, I took a deck of cards and, um, you know, some rubber bands and some coins and my close-up case and went running over there. But with the storm coming, it was so dark. I, my close-up case was dark. I was just sitting at a picnic table with other people. I, I did the first 45 minutes standing up, but by the time you got over there, I was sitting down with a group of people showing them magic. Yeah. But um, it still wasn't, it wasn't a huge turnout. Well, it was a pretty gloomy day to be at the fair. I don't think it was a huge turnout at the fair that night either. Yeah. So. Yeah. But they're doing a, a fundraiser and they want to hire us for that and they were talking to natalie that night they still love us everything's yep. great i yep. felt like they were happy they were fine with it we were you know we it we wasn't felt like what we i had wanted to, we felt like we had to apologize we're like we really didn't want to get out of the show we would rather do a show but you know thanks for being flexible because we can't we can't risk all of our show stuff yeah so we uh we did two library shows this week in Northern Virginia, or last week in Northern Virginia. And we, we check it out on Google Earth every show we go to to check out parking. And the first place, the parking lot's covered in trees. So you can tell there's a parking lot, but you can't see anything because the trees are covering it, the big bushy trees. Oh, no. So we just drive up there and we call ahead and said, you know, hey, we're bringing an RV and a trailer. We need three spots saved for us. Lengthwise, not side by side, lengthwise. 
ruining the surprise there. I'm just saying. But we need three spots saved for us. And we get there, and there is a pool section in front of the library where you can parallel park. Yeah. So I just parked in front of the library, and all the parking was behind the library. And I'm like, well, I'll just park here. And then I walked inside and I told the lady, hey, we're here. And she says, oh, well, I saved you some spots in the. Gosh, you're huge. It's an RV pulling a trailer. It's three spots lengthwise. We saved you three spots side by side. Well, that's not going to work, lady. Why? We told you it's an RV and a no, trailer. We told him the length of everything, too. Anyway. Okay. It's okay. So she's like, um, oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to remove the cones from back in the back. Okay. We go do the show, and that's great. As we're loading out the show, the lady's on the phone. I mean, it's huge. It's it's an RV, an RV, and a trailer. It's huge. And I'm like, lady, you're freaking them out. She's calling the next location and telling yeah. them how big we are. And I'm like, I already looked it up on Google Earth. It's fine. But it's an RV. I'm only telling them because they freak out. It sounds like you're freaking out, lady. It didn't yeah. work fine here. It's going to yeah. be fine at the other place. Yeah. We get to the other place, and they're right beside a school. It's summertime. Yeah. I parked in the school parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, we had to walk an extra 100 feet. It's good for us. We're fine. That's easy. The parking for the library was back there, too, though. It's fine. We would, yeah. but we had to take 50 extra steps. Because so we okay. parked in the back of the parking lot. It was fine. And then we get to the front of the parking lot. And they had three cones in three <laughs> spots, side by side by side. You can't park an RV there yeah. and a trailer in three spots that are side by side. Yeah. But um, we got there, did the show. It was convoluted how they had us set up because people had to come from behind us to end the show. Yeah. Which I didn't like. No, but that's that's what they wanted. It made it no weird. sense. I had to tell a couple people, hey. Come around and watch the show because they're trying to watch through. The so our backs were to bookshelves, which we can look through. And there was a couple kids trying to look through. I'm like, come around and watch the Maddie show. You gotta come over here. You can't stand back there. So just behind the scenes, if you're watching from behind a magician, we have two or three things in a in the entire show that they would see the secret or see something that they might be able to figure out something. I think one trick would be an obvious giveaway if they watched it from behind. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't think anything else. But I don't want people behind me. And you don't want people behind you anyway because it distracts the audience. They're seeing people behind you and they're looking at them. Yeah. It's not good. They were good audiences. It was good audiences. Dude, they went crazy. Yeah. The Both the people that that ran the library were like, I'm going to refer you to everybody. (sighs) And this isn't a regular show. I mean, you are are a magician. What are you doing? That's who you hired. <laughs> yeah, but some magicians, you know, are like very children, like Sesame Street type of magicians, you know? Yeah. What color is this silk? I'm going to make it disappear. And that's just not our show. That's not how we do. No. And that's all well and good. It has its place in time. Dude, our kid, Lana, is 11 years old, and we mm-hmm. take her to a kid convention every year. And those magicians do the kids magic show it is for kids it's not for adults but lana eats it up oh, lana she loves, loves it loves it laughs her butt it's off. not our style though we can't no, do it ours yeah. is family oriented we want the adults to have a good time too so yeah to each his own it's whatever you want to do but ours we like to do include everybody so right it's fine um we got one more subject here and we'll wrap everything up okay but uh it just says church oh yeah We've been getting back in the habit of going to church. So I've been telling Wes. We've never to. gone to church in the summer. No. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. We're, we're working around the clock. But it seems like we're getting Sundays off, which is fine, which is great. Except one Sunday, but we had time to go to church and then go to the show. So we've been trying to get up and get to church. Church is an hour away now from home. Um, cause we go to the same church that we went to before we moved. I told Wes we need to get, we, I mean, when COVID came, it was all online and then we never got back into the swing of things. And I told Wes, I said, we either need to find a closer church so that we actually get up and go, or we need to get our butts out of bed and get back to church. We just need to go. But they didn't have daycare for the boys. For a while. Yeah. There was no nursery. And it's like, you can't concentrate when you have babbling babies. But um, they have that now. 
there's no excuses except for us just being not wanting to get out of bed. Tired, exhausted, so, exhausted. I think it's been like the past five weeks we've gotten up and gone to church. It's worked out that we either had no shows or we had a show that we could go to church first and then head to the show. So it's worked out. And um, I know Lana loves it. She has lots of friends at church. And I'm like, we need to get the boys to church because they need... They're in a bubble with yeah, us. They're definitely in a bubble. They need more socialization. They need to be with other kids. And they do well with other kids. So thank goodness. So they really enjoy going to church. They like that nursery. They do not want to leave when we come to pick them up. They love the people that are in there. They love the toys that are in there. They, I mean, some weeks they just run in and just leave. Other weeks I have gone in and they'll both turn around and go, go, go. Like, get out of here, mom. We're good. <laughs> That's awesome. Which is That's wonderful. Good. That's wonderful. But it, it's great. I'm glad that they love it. So we needed to get back to church because we just need, you need that. You need it. You need that spiritual learning, right? Well, and, and our old neighborhood, back to the other subject, our old neighborhood, Lana had two boys next door she could play with, a little girl down the street, and she had friends. She had a homeschool group in our county that we belong to. Yeah. That Natalie would go to in the fall and the spring. But um, the boys don't have that yet. And they definitely don't have any neighbors to play with because we live out in the country. And they're the youngest one on this, the youngest ones on this street. Um, but the street is so street big. I mean, have, it's not a real street. Yeah. No, there's five houses on our street. <laughs> they're all, and they're all spaced. So I love it. Yeah. But there's just no kids to play with. So we got to find other things. And I probably should try and find a homeschool group here. It's just, it's one of those things where you're like, you know, you need to do it, but it's another thing that you have to make time for and figure out how to fit into your schedule. Well, I really a enjoyed that. New one things you got to get done. I really enjoyed that Fredericksburg homeschool group that we belong to That's because it was, it was, it was, uh, what well, it was cheap. Number one. Yeah. And number two, it was come as you please. Well, they do if have they do classes. Have they do have classes and we can't take classes because right. we don't have a regular schedule. But um, yeah, they would have one-off events that you could do. So. They did Christmas stuff. They did Easter stuff. They did field trips. And, you know, uh, 700 and some families are a part of it. And I teach classes, magic classes there on occasion. Well, we can get back into that one. But I think I need to find one that's closer to home too. Yeah. yeah. Try to. That's fine we'll by me. Yeah. But anyway, that's us uh, catching you guys up. I think we had some stuff to talk about this yeah. time. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Sign up for Natalie's newsletter. We'll wrap it up with commercials. Um, just find her on Facebook. Check it out. Uh, she's working really hard on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I have. I had to get, I had to ask a lot of people for their emails. Well, not only that, though. I mean, we did brainstorm in the car for another topics for next month's issue. And yeah. we're working on She's passionate about it. And I love that she's passionate about it. I love helping her. And we do everything together. So um, magiciansmagicshop.com. Check out our Patreon. And um, we have a lot of stuff coming up for you guys in the fourth year. Lots of surprises. Uh, more magic. More everything. And... Uh, what else we had to say? See, See you next week. week. Check us out online at wesisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scenes videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. -S -E